Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Up now, we have From Online to On Screen, How to Scale and Grow Your Brand Across Categories. I'm happy to hand the session now over to Kelly Oriad. Kelly? OK. Hi, everyone. My name is Kaylee, and this is my co-founder, Kelly. We are the co-founders of a brand named Slumberkins. And just to, if you haven't heard about Slumberkins, we are an emotional learning brand um, for families. And we teach parents and kids how to handle emotions through characters with intention, therapeutic content, and now kids entertainment. Um, Kelly and I are gonna go through the story and the journey that we've taken to build this brand. Um, we've done it very non-traditionally. Um, we're located in the Pacific Northwest near Portland, Oregon, and we used to be um, educators. I was a former special education teacher, and Kelly is a marriage and family therapist and school counselor. So we've kind of followed our, made up our own rules of the game as we've gone, and um, the brand has come to life in many different categories and ways as a DTC first brand that we'll walk you through. So first and foremost, when we started Slumberkins as a teacher and a therapist, we wanted to infuse our backgrounds and our skills. So we always laugh saying now we would never have quit our jobs in education to be selling plush toys. Uh, it's kind of crazy that we've ended up here. But really what we're doing is, is taking those toys or taking those tools and infusing them with our educational backgrounds. And what we found that was really interesting was that we had a unique approach to how we were doing that. So if you, if anybody's been to therapy, <laughs> when you go to a therapist, um, they have a unique way of putting together all of the ways that they work with people. And we did that in our own way and infused that into our books and our characters. And we call it the connect to grow approach. And um, it really not only engages children. So obviously the end user is the child and we want the child to have fun and be interested in the product, but we're thinking about everything systemically. So we're thinking about the experience that a parent and child are having together, and how can we enrich that experience, and how can we make that moment meaningful so that there is a therapeutic moment between parent and child that increases the feeling of love and attachment and happiness, which ultimately gets transferred onto our brand. And um, that was sort of our hypothesis when we started, and um, Kaylee and I started really knowing nothing about business, so uh, it's been a, a journey, to say the least, of figuring it out along the way. So we started with the bedtime routine. As new moms ourselves, we concepted this while we were on maternity leave together from our roles in education. And we knew that it was bedtime, that was the moments that we were most tuned into our kids. We we're also super motivated to help them get to sleep. We were super focused on our own sleep. I feel like once you have kids, sleep is the number one thing everyone is talking about. Like, are you getting sleep? Is your kid getting sleep? So we were like, okay, we need to start, start here. And how can we make this moment more meaningful, more connected, and also use what we know about psychology to support growing a brand and characters. So we knew that at about 12 months of age, kids often attach to a transitional object like a lovey. Um, so we taught ourselves to sew <laughs> and started sewing our first versions of um, our snugglers, which are sort of a redesign of the lovey blanket, and um, wrote poems or stories on ca cardstock that were interactive to support the parent-child connection at bedtime, focusing on different skills. And our first uh, skills that we focused on were sleep, which was a progressive muscle relaxation routine uh, in rhyming form. And then the next one was self-esteem, because that was uh, another big topic that we were running into in the schools. So where we started was finding that problem and finding that solution that we wanted to provide to kids and parents. And now it's just opened up a world of possibility as we look for more meaningful moments throughout a parent and child's life uh, cycle through the day and how we can show up and infuse already developed toys or ideas with this therapeutic intention. So it's, it's really expanded a lot from there. Um, so since, I'm going to walk to this side of the stage because I feel like I'm hiding next to you. Um, so since we launched um, the products and we started out with the books and the plush as kind of our core products, we knew all along um, 
we had the idea for the storylines for the characters. We knew how important storytelling is for learning with kids as educators. Um, and we always had this bigger vision of bringing, bringing the characters to life in that way. And so we'll go through kind of a timeline of events over how we ended up in a partnership with the Jim Henson Company and then now have a show on Apple TV Plus with our characters in it. Um, but it, this just illustrates um, the way that you can expand on IP, um, even starting with a core product. This is really uh, our perspective over putting the customer at the center of everything we do. And something that's unique about Slumberkins is that in the world of the toy industry, typically the child is the, the target. You're trying to market to children, trying to get them to be obsessed with your brand. We as moms, we knew we were marketing to other moms. So that's where we put the mom or a parent or caregiver in the center of everything that we build around. And we go at it through the lens of earning their trust, um, being really relatable to them. We, it's kind of a founder market fit. Us as moms and educators, we're kind of talking to other moms and educators and trying to problem solve for the things that we saw um, would be great if a brand could show up in the, in the preschool arena and serve customers in this way. So we wrap around our customers in four different ways through community. We know that especially Especially in COVID times, mom fa moms found community online. Specifically, our community is built in a Facebook group, and it's where a lot of the parents that are engaged in the world of Slumberkins have very authentic conversations in and around the brand about their, their own and their children's mental and emotional health. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to kind of establish ourselves as thought leaders amongst that community and also just relate to them. And then, of course, commerce. 90% uh, of our business is direct-to-consumer. Um, that's one of the reasons why we don't have a booth at Toy Fair this year. We, we really um, have built kind of an e-commerce engine, and we see other channels as just supplementary. And then we have curriculum that's sold directly to teachers and as well into school districts. And then we have content that brings the learning to life um, in the more traditional ways that you see IP in the toy industry come to life. So one of the things that was, I think, most helpful of starting as a teacher and a therapist that really served us along the way was collaboration and relationships. As new moms, the whole reason we started this brand together was because we were best friends and wanted to be around each other and be hanging out with our new babies and, uh, you know, started w through relationship. And that did not stop. So every time we were meeting somebody new, like at a toy fair or reaching out, we were always cultivating relationships and not looking at things transactionally. So really open to learn and open to con real connections with people. And that has served us so well, um, moving moving into the expansion that we've had. So we've had a lot of luck and serendipity along the way as well. But um, from starting, like I said, in 2016, we were hand sewing these at our ki my kitchen table, working on the weekends, uh, still working part-time in the schools, uh, building out all of the characters, writing up their family histories and their bios and having huge dreams about where we wanted this to go, um, along with creating community, talking to other parents, and asking what they really needed and what did they want? What were they struggling with? We were in the same boat as new moms, so we felt really good about connecting with other parents and people with young children. Um, and it wasn't until we got on Shark Tank, actually, um, that we had just switched over to manufacturing overseas. So that had been a long lead, and I remember Googling how do you manufacture something? <laughs> I had no idea. It was like page 12 of Google. Um, I think I wrote like who manufactures for Disney or something. And like, you know, 12 pages down, ended up finding a contact in the name of a person who was based in LA that had worked with Disney or an, an Ikea and different um, larger groups. And when we contacted them, I, th I heard other speakers talking about, immediately he said, you know, minimum, 5,000 per SKU, this is how the plush industry works, you're not gonna go anywhere. And I think instead of taking that as a failure or saying, oh dang, I'm just, now I gotta go find something else, I engaged with them and I talked with them. And I said, you know, that interesting. I mean, I, I wanted to contact the best of the best. I wanted to understand how to build something and I have a dream of going this far and maybe you could be my mentor, maybe you could help me out or if I, find somebody, maybe you would know who they were so you could vet it for me. And I think just 
creating a real relationship, following up with like a thank you note, um, made the difference. And that person ended up um, being our main manufacturer. We almost went with a smaller manufacturer that actually probably wouldn't have been a great choice. Um, but he ended up lowering his MOQs for us. <laughs> and like the day we aired on Shark Tank, our community sold through everything that we had uh, hand sewn and we had zero product right before Shark Tank was airing and we had to air freight our first um, batch of product in from overseas from this person and, and you know, ship it ourselves and whatnot. But it's really been through things like that that have grown and again, we met the president of the Jim Henson Company at a conference, just talking to her about our own kids and our and our um, backgrounds as educators and what we were wanting to do, and that came up naturally. We didn't go around pitching. We, we connected with people in a real way, and that's really opened the path and the doors for us to, to step into new categories. And I would just say when we think about expansion across categories, one of the most important things that we did early on before we, I mean, Kelly and I as educators um, had built our life on a pretty, pretty restricted frugal lifestyle. So we didn't pay ourselves for the first two years building Slumberkins, but we invested into things like IP protection, trademark, design patents, uh, protecting anything that we could of intellectual property. And with the nature of our business, with stories and characters, with a specific look to them, um, we were able to get awarded design patents, which played a huge piece of the puzzle when then we were negotiating with the Jim Henson Company and Apple around the design of characters and how they came to life. And so um, that's just kind of a tidbit of anytime you think you can expand across categories, make sure you have the protection needed um, at, the, at the front end. Um, even if it's, and it's like, it's so annoying to go in and file copyright on everything you do, but it is definitely worth it in the long run. Um, okay, so after we went on Shark Tank, we came, we were in a partnership with the Jim Henson Company, kind of brainstormed how we were going to bring Slumberkins to life. Um, that kind of really set us on a path. And something just to note, even back when you saw the handmade characters, Kelly and I always had a big vision for what Slumberkins could be in the world. And um, we were filling out a business uh, one-page sheet that there was a line on there to state, like, build your vision and answer the sentence of, I'll know I've made it when. And back then, 2016, we're sewing at her parents' like craft room table. Our answer was, when there's slumberkins on ice. And so we really saw the, the power that characters can have um, on families that really grow to love those characters. And I will say we are proud to say we know of 12 character tattoos out there in the world of parents and one really cool grandma. <laughs> um, and so characters, when someone really falls in love with a story and you, they relate to your story, it's endless possibilities of IP world building. And I would say one thing that we noticed, and we came to Toy Fair a few years ago for the first time and just walked and were meeting people. And um, the one thing that really gave us a lot of strength in the brand was the community that we built. So a lot of times we would talk to people about licensing or we would talk to people about different product categories. And it always ended up being that they were more interested in us because of our sales channel to our community. So our community will show up and buy from us very, very quickly and is a very fast uh, turn sales channel. And so it was actually leveraging and using the community, testing out new products and new ways of expansion that we could, we could grow and start to then use the data from our community or the fact that those things sold to be able to pitch to larger entities like uh, Nordstrom, who now carries our pajamas with our characters on them or you know, like the Apple TV show, we, there was music on there, and we also just la launched a studio album, so did our own music as well with some really amazing artists like Ingrid Michaelson and um, Katy Perry and A Great Big World. Yeah, and I will just go back to the protection around IP and whatnot. It came into a huge play, especially with licensed products with Nordstrom, where you know they wanted to put a different color sloth on pajamas, but because we had protected the sloth that was ours, we could say no, that's actually like not in our like brand IP protection. We need to stick to the core brand Slumberkins um, sloth color or whatnot. But let's see. So just to kind of go over some of the things that we've talked about. Um, 
The meaningful products that deliver on our mission, I think that mission is at the heart of what we do more so even than anything else. Like Kelly said, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't have built this brand if it wasn't for wanting to change the way that families and kids um, interact with the emotional realm and emotional development. Knowing your customer, knowing who you're going for, it was easy for Kaylee and I because we were our customer. We were new moms at the time. We had new babies. We were also edu an educator and a therapist. We saw a white space in the market. We saw that there was, it was filled with products. There were so many products that you could get for a baby or a kid and the different birthdays. And we started to, s to see and were shocked at like, wow, it's so expensive when you get into this, <laughs> this area. But um, what we didn't see was intentional products that were built with the parent in mind um, that were not just about engaging the kid, but engaging the family in a way that would be emotionally supportive. So we were able to infuse our expertise there, um, knowing that people like us would really appreciate that because we were um, you know, children of the 80s and 90s where under the tree you wanted to have as many, our parents were filling it up with tons and tons of presents and the more the better. And I think our generation was starting to get on board with less is more, <laughs> a little bit more intentional, uh, let's not overdo things. And so I think it's definitely continued on that path of people wanting more uh, intentional products and um, high quality products as well. Um, and then a note on an engaged community. Um, a couple of things. We pull our community more than <laughs> anything else we do because we're constantly listening to the customer, listening to the parent that loves the products. We pull them anytime we even want to expand into a new category. We'll say, what is it that you guys are looking for in your parenting life? And give us like your rundown of a day in parenting where your pain points are. And then that's where we go and develop to try to solve a pain point. Um, we constantly will do like, we'll show them samples of things that we've been working on to get their feedback. And then one of the probably most effective things that we did with the community was even when we were in the conversations with the Jim Henson company and getting ready to go pitch the show to different networks, um, we pulled our Facebook group and said, do you guys, would you guys want a Slumberkins TV show out there and tell us why? And so then we batched all of their answers as to why they wanted to show, why they wanted to see the characters brought to life, packaged it in a cute little chat books um, uh, book to be able to then leave with the network. So then when we met with networks, the network had a chat book full of customers and viewers asking for a show to be made um, around Slumberkins, um, which was just a powerful tool in our pocket at that time. Um, and then do you want to hit on relationships? Yeah, I think uh, we're always continuing to expand our relationships to grow. I think at the stage that we've gotten to now, one of the hardest things that we've had to learn how to say is no, because in the beginning it was anything and everything. Anyone we met, any new opportunity that we had, Kaylee and I were typical founders saying, yes, yes, okay, let's try that, let's do this. And we've really gotten to that place where it's being very, very focused on what we do best, what's at the core of what we're doing, what we're trying to do in the world, and how to expand relationships in new and innovative ways that support that vision. Um, and it's been really interesting and fun to be able to not only be in the toy category, but branch outside of that into things like music and gaming and entertainment and just take those concepts further. So, um, but again, I think we, we stay true to our roots, which was being educators in the first place. And if you know any teachers or educators, they are scrappy, they don't have a lot of money and they just collaborate a lot. <laughs> and so we take that along with us as we uh, continue down this road. Yeah, I definitely think there's been a lot of learned lessons over saying yes, green lighting, too many things to do at once, and then doing too many things not very well. And so being able to say no and properly sequence the series of events and what we're going to focus on at one given time has been a game changer for us to actually bring things to market in a really well thought out way. Um, so yeah, that's it from us today. We'll head over to the um, speaker area after and thank you guys so much for showing up and listening to our story of slumberkins. Thank you everybody.